Okay. Welcome, everybody. My name is Danilo Bonilla. I'm one of the advisors at the International Education Office, um, the UCLA IAO, International Education Office. And we are very happy to bring you this 30-minute webinar. This one is geared on political science. Uh, we will have um, two returning students, uh, and now they're alumni that went on UCEAP. Um, both were political science majors, and we will ask them some questions about their experiences. Let's see. So again, uh, I'm one of the four advisors here at the International Education Office. Um, as you can see here on the screen, my area is uh, Spain, Italy, Latin America. We have four other advisors, and they handle other areas of the world. For example, somebody's in charge of Africa, somebody's charge, in charge of Europe, so on and so forth. So again, um, go ahead and just log into the UCLA International Education website and you'll find our contact information there. Email, if you wanna Zoom with us, we can set up a 30 minute Zoom with you. Um, so again, uh, here's my contact information on the screen, my email and all that. Let's see, let me try to go to the next um, slide. Okay, so welcome again. I hope you can see me and uh, hear me clearly. Uh, I know we've had some technical problems the last couple of days with Zoom. So the first slide is basically who we are. So the International Education Office is the one-stop shop for all study abroad programs, whether it be summer programs, internship programs, you know, traditional uh, university immersion programs. We are here, uh, International Education Office. And we have many coordinators and many advisors, as I mentioned earlier. We can also connect you with uh, returning students and in certain cases, alumni, like we are doing today. Um, so again, welcome. We're very excited because this, is, this week is the um, Global Learning Opportunities Week. Um, and a lot of our information and web recordings will be on the UCLA IEO website uh, slash globe. So, um, Let's see, let me go ahead and go to the next slide. Here's our agenda for today. So again, welcome, a very warm welcome from the International Education Office. We will briefly talk about COVID. Uh, the next thing is we will have a brief refresher for the 101 uh, Study Abroad 101 webinar. Hopefully most of you saw it, but if not, I will briefly go over that with you. The other thing is how to study abroad in your major as a political science major. And we will uh, quickly go through some sample programs. And then uh, lastly, we will be uh, asking questions to um, our returning students, alumni. And we'll do, we will do that uh, in the last 15 minutes. Okay, study abroad and COVID. So as of today, um, our in-person um, study abroad options for fall 2020, <laughs> that should be 2022. Uh, sorry about that, that should be 2022. I will be in person after of eight, 18 month hiatus. Um, you know, we're very excited to send students abroad. We currently have some students abroad as well um, uh, this fall and Continuing, sorry. So this fall, uh, we have some students uh, 2021 and beyond those terms, we will continue to have in person. Uh, please check out our webinars on the UCLA IO website. There is a 15 minute webinar regarding COVID and what our office is doing in terms of health, safety, precautions. So take a look at that when you get a chance. It's only 15 minutes uh, Zoom webinar. The other thing that I want to um, present is make sure that you apply for your passport now. Make sure that you check that your passport is not expiring anytime soon. There are many programs that need a photocopy of your passport right away when you apply. So make sure that you take care of that. I know there are some delays right now with the US Passport Agency. And this actually applies to both domestic and international students, uh, foreign and domestic students. So go ahead and check your passports and make sure they're updated. Okay, so the 101 refreshers, I will quickly go over this. Um, um, if you did not see the 101 uh, uh, webinar on Monday, go ahead and take a look at it on our website. But yeah, basically what we covered on the 101 webinar is the program types, credit transfer, the cost of programs, how to fund the program, uh, application deadlines, timelines, all those nitty gritty. 
uh, type of items. What is covered in this webinar is uh, specifically political science. We're going to talk about political science and some of the programs uh, that have a special focus or special offerings in political science around the world. And then again, we will be speaking with our returnees alumni uh, at the end for questions and answers. Okay, so really quickly, one type of program is university immersion. That's where you study with local professors, local students at one of our 150 different universities around the world. The other type of program that we have is the UCLA faculty-led program. Those are very cool experiential programs on the go uh, where UCLA professors take UC, UCLA students abroad during the summer. The other type of program is a special internship research program. Those are offered during the summer, fall, winter, spring, and you actually get credit, uh, academic credit, UC credit for doing an internship abroad. Again, these are just only three types of uh, programs. We have dozens of others, hybrids, language and culture, and uh, we will talk about that in a second. So one thing that I wanna point out is on the UCLA International Education website, we have this great tool um, how to choose your program. It will ask you to think about your goals of, you know, what are your goals of studying abroad? It will ask you, um, is it important for you to be, you know, doing a program because of your language uh, requirement or upper division credit, or you're just doing this for upper division units or professional development. So again, this will help you narrow down your choices. As you know, we have hundreds and hundreds of countries and programs every year we keep expanding. So take a look at this uh, tool on the website, on the IEO website. Okay, um, can you use your financial aid while you're abroad? Yes, make sure that you apply for FAFSA every single year. I believe the deadline is March 2nd. And um, you can also apply for scholarships and go ahead and start looking at that now. We, we do have a special webinar on our um, UCLA IO page under the GLOW section, where you can take a look at these two distinct and vast topics of financial aid and scholarships. So go ahead and take a look. Um, there's plenty of money out there. Um, you know, obviously a scholarship will not, one scholarship would not cover the full cost of the program, but it will chip away at some of the costs. Okay, so yeah, you start applying as early as nine months. So go ahead and start uh, looking at the different programs. Most programs are not competitive. Uh, there are a few programs that are first come first serve uh, because they have limited space. It's a small cohort program, but most programs are not competitive, uh, but start looking at them now and applying. And yes, for most summer and fall programs, you can uh, um, start the application now. For some of them, you might have to wait until October, November, but we'll go over those details in a second. Okay, so uh, studying abroad um, uh, on UC, uh, as a UC political science major. So again, you're not obligated to study in your major. You can do a little bit of foreign language. You can do it for upper division units. Um, nevertheless, whatever you do, you are still working towards uh, making progress toward your, towards your UCLA degree. So be flexible, um, you know, maybe take a little bit of a core class, political science class, maybe a GE, a language, uh, uh, be flexible. And most programs are, are not designed around political science, but you can definitely get uh, political science credit and we'll go over that in a second. So expand. Um, your study abroad beyond your major too. Try to be a little bit flexible. Okay, but if you do want to study uh, within your major, we have a couple of guidelines here. Let's see. So basically, um, so as you can see on the screen, um, you know, political science classes abroad, they will give you upper division credit, but not necessarily departmental credit. So what you would need to do is petition and get pre-approvals. Uh, you do this with the UCLA uh, Political Science Department. So, you know, we encourage you to petition as soon as possible and try to get a pre-approval with the department just to get an idea of um, what you can get credit for. And um, the UCEAP courses can be applied towards uh, these four different uh, fields. Um, or the, your concentration field, distribution field, or electives. Just make sure that the classes that you're taking abroad are, are at least uh, four units and that, that there are at least upper division and you do have to take them for a letter grade. 
Um, this information, by the way, is also on the UCLA IEO website. Um, I'll talk about maps in a second. It's a, um, an academic uh, map for political science. But yeah, basically make sure that you, if you are applying uh, for credit for these, um, for these fields, you try to get a syllabi, you know, possible texts, uh, everything possible um, just to make it easier on the political science advisor to evaluate um, your, your classes from abroad. So again, and then down here, the political theory and international relations, those are all the uh, field areas. Um, and most of you are very familiar, familiar with that. Okay, so just an, another quick note, um, a maximum of two courses can be applied uh, for, political, for the political science department. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, and yeah, basically students are not required to identify courses that match you know, exactly what the political science department courses offer. We do, um, let's see, hold on just a second, let me move this. Um, but yeah, again, just to reiterate it to repeat, <laughs> uh, students can take a little bit of political science, upper division, lower division, so be a little bit flexible with your um, course listings uh, while you are abroad. Let's see, so there is no specific time for political science majors to go abroad. You can do it any time as long as you, uh, seek out proper, um, proper advice from us and from Alex at the political science department. Um, one thing that I do wanna share is if you go to the UCLA International Education website um, under UCEAP academics, you'll see these things called maps, which are basically, uh, will give you the information that I went over, um, you know, regarding political science, credit, giving credit abroad, uh, petitioning. So make, make sure that you take a look at that. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and go to our next slide. Okay, sample programs really quickly. Um, let's see. Okay, so one program through which is the UCLA Summer Travel Study Program, the registration will open up on November, November 18th at 8 a.m. And um, there are various programs there, about 15 to 20 programs. And there is one specifically historically that has been a political science uh, department program. And it travels to Amsterdam, Brussels, Paris. Uh, Professor O'Neill is one of the, um, the leaders of this program. And it does satisfy uh, two upper division courses in uh, um, two upper division history courses. And obviously, it can count as political science as well. Again, um, this is through UCLA Summer Travel Study Program uh, during the summer only. Okay, another program that I quickly want to explain is the UCLA Global Internship Programs. So this program is organized by our office. It's a great program where you can actually internship abroad and get credit. Obviously, uh, when you are internship internship, doing the internship abroad, it will be about eight weeks long. You do take a course along with that. Um, basically, most students take two courses in about eight units, but it's a very, very unique program where um, you're actually not really in the classroom. You're out in the field doing an internship for credit, and you're enrolled in a uh, 195 course. It's a special um, of course, um, and this one would be, there, there is a political science track and uh, there are various locations from Colombia to Buenos Aires, Argentina, London, South Africa, very, very exciting. So definitely check out the details um, on our website and there's a specific advisor for this. His name is Andrew Bottom, so you can always contact him. Um, Global Cities Program is another exciting program that is offered through our office here. The application opens up on November 18th and it closes on April 1st. So this program is basically what we call a special cohort exchange program where there are um, about 10, 10 to 15 UCLA students that go to either Barcelona, Milan or Amsterdam and they are met up with um, another 10 to 15 students from those countries. And they, both of the UCLA students and the students from those countries take classes together. They bond, we have social cultural activities together and they um, go to the, um, the three different universities 
um, that are listed on our website. Um, after those, after the, um, the, what is it, eight weeks more or less that they're there, um, both the UCLA students and the foreign students come back to UCLA together. And in many cases, they house together and they do a lot of social and cultural activities together. And they're taking UCLA summer classes here together as well. So again, it's a very interesting cohort uh, program where you really bond with the RHA students. And again, that's in Barcelona, Milan, or Amsterdam. A lot more details are on our website. And then, um, Really quickly, the UCEP programs, those are, you know, it's a system-wide operation. There are summer, fall, winter, spring, you know, internship programs, traditional uh, university immersion programs, language and culture, everything that you can think of. It's a large organization. Um, the applications are, are already open for summer and fall. So go ahead and start applying. Again, we have over different countries. Um, but I do want to give you a quick sample, and then we'll go over to the, the returnee students, the alumni. So one quick sample is in uh, Germany, in Berlin, Free University of Berlin. You can take classes in English, and as you can see on the screen, there are very interesting upper division classes that are about four or five units each. You know, Islam in Europe, a, his, a historical perspective, you know, media politics um, in Germany very interesting courses. You can live with host families in Germany and you can do a little bit of a side trips, um, you know, with, with the program and with the students. And this is offered for fall semester or spring semester. So one great program in Germany that we would like to highlight. The other program is in Korea. There's, you can actually go for summer, fall, winter, spring. And, um, you know, as you can see on the screen, there are, um, Interesting classes, the two Koreas, the Korea Peninsula, foreign, uh, foreign policy and, and power, very interesting classes, again, upper division, um, four units each, four or five units each. And then the last one, um, I think my video froze. Can you all hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, good. That's good. You can hear me, but um, I think my video froze. Okay. Um, can you see the screen? Can you see Argentina, Chile slide? No. No? Okay. No, we're still in Germany. Okay. <laughs> so um, let's see. Anyway, I'll continue on. But, but basically, we have another program in Argentina, Chile. It's called Human Rights and Cultural Memory. And you spent uh, some time in Buenos Aires and some time in Chile, upper division coursework. Um, again, dealing with human rights, poverty development, another great program. Okay, so um, right now on my screen, I see a photo of Katie um, and Alexis, but I think you cannot see it. Hopefully uh, Zoom will, 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 um, will fix that. But anyway, go ahead, uh, Alexis and Katie, go ahead and turn on your videos and your sound. And I'm gonna go ahead and ask you to go ahead and introduce yourselves. We will maybe um, uh, ask Alexis first. Again, tell us your name, your major, where you studied, all those details, please. Great, so my name is Alexis Harmon. Um, I was also a political science major. I uh, specialized in international relations and I studied abroad in Dublin, Ireland in uh, winter and spring of 2019 at Trinity College, Dublin. Okay, great. Um, let's go with Katie, please. Hi, I'm Katie. Um, I was a poli sci major and I did the um, IPA internship program in fall of 2019. Okay, great. And that was in Dublin as well. In Dublin as well. Okay, perfect. So maybe the first question for both of you, anybody can start. Um, did you take courses in your major and how did that go? Uh, were you able to petition it? Did they transfer? If you give us, can give us a little bit of detail. Um, uh, anybody can start. Maybe Catherine, go ahead and start. Yeah, so I actually had a ton of success getting my classes to transfer over. As part of the program, you take a course in Irish history, Irish politics, and Irish literature, and then you also get uh, credit for your internship. So I got my internship, and I believe the Irish politics courses to transfer over as um, the elective requirement for the poli sci major, which was great. And then I also got the Irish literature 
forced to transfer over as uh, an additional class for my English minor. So that was unique to being an English minor, but I definitely think with this program, you can get at least two or three courses to transfer over. Okay, great. Thank you, Katie. Uh, Alexis, go right ahead, please. Yeah, so I actually took six courses at Trinity. Um, four of them were in political science. Um, two of them I were totally unrelated. Um, I took one in sociology and then one in history. And I had success in getting all of them to transfer over and they applied to exactly what I wanted them to. It was all really easy actually, which was wonderful. Wow, wow, that's very nice to hear. Uh, so basically, this did not really delay your graduation. Is that correct for both uh, Katie and Alexis? Yeah, it did not. I was actually able to graduate a quarter early, so it didn't delay. Oh, wow. It. Yeah, I wasn't delayed either. Wow, perfect, perfect. Okay, so the next question has to do with finances. How, was it, how were the finances overall? Is about the same as Los Angeles? Did anybody receive any state or federal aid? If you can please be, uh, maybe uh, comment on that. Uh, go ahead, Alexis, you can go first. Great. So I was receiving aid for my entire time at UCLA, and that, that continued when I went to Ireland. In fact, I actually ended up receiving more money while studying abroad than I did while in Los Angeles because I applied to supplementary scholarships and received those as well. So I literally had my living um, subsidized as well through a stipend. It was really great. Wow, very nice. Which uh, scholarships did you apply for? So I already had basically a full ride to UCLA. And then in addition to that, I got the UCEAP Global Blogger Scholarship, which wow. I don't have anymore, but it was a really interesting experience to blog about. Very nice. Thank you, Alexis. Uh, let's go with Katie, please. Yeah, I had potentially the opposite experience <laughs> with <laughs> finances. I, um, I didn't have any scholarship or financial aid at UCLA, so I didn't have anything to transfer over to um, my study abroad program. Um, and I would say in terms of the cost of the program, it was a little bit more pricey than a quarter at UCLA would have been, but I think that was balanced out by the fact that I got the internship experience and mm -hmm. I think the same, if not more, class credit as a typical quarter at UCLA. Yeah, I believe for your program, did you receive something like 24 units total for the fall? I want to say, yeah, it was like 21 to 24. 21 to 24, okay. Which, yeah, cool. a quarter at UCLA, I think I was getting anywhere from 12 to 16, so. Oh, wow, okay, good, good. And then basically the next question is if you can um, maybe briefly describe a little bit um, you know, the city that you were in, you know, the, uh, the organization or university that you were in. And then I'll also ask you later, um, basically on a day to day basis, what did you do? How was it? Was it very intense? Was it very comparable to UCLA? I'm sure both of you do had good time management skills, good time management skills and did, did very well. But um, go ahead. We'll, we'll go with Katie first. Yeah, so I absolutely loved living in Dublin. I would say culturally, it was very, it wasn't a huge culture shock coming from the US, you know, everyone speaks English and like, it's just the nicest people possible there. Everyone is so welcoming. And especially in my internship program, I worked for a Senator and he, as, long, and as well as like everybody else in the parliament building was so excited to hear from us and hear about our experience there and was really excited about having us there. Um, do you want me to get into like my day to day now or? Um, let's see, why don't we switch over to Alexis and then back to you. Great. So I also love Dublin. I thought it was an incredibly friendly city. Um, I made a lot of Irish friends. I think that's one of the benefits of going um, during the normal school year, not over the summer, is you're with international students. Um, so it was really great and they show you the city and it's just, it's, it's wonderful. Yeah, and I want to bounce off of that. I think that's something that you don't necessarily get with the IPA internship program because um, you take all of your classes and you do your internship with uh, students from the state from the U.S. So, but you do get to interact with um, people from Ireland through the internship. They're just not students. I see. Okay, perfect, perfect. So, and did you also have? Um... Um, again, day-to-day, -day, did I ask you that, Alexa, sorry? No, so 
I was actually able to structure my courses so that I was only in school four days a week, which was the same as UC. LA. So I had three day weekends, which was great for traveling and exploring the country. But when in school, um, I would say it's pretty comparable to UCLA. Um, the course load is a little bit heavier since we're taking more classes, um, but the reading is the same. And um, just like UCLA, there's all sorts of beautiful places to hang out in between courses and um, to talk with people and do your readings and so on. So yeah, that was my day to day. Oh, wow. Um, let's see. Um, I'm going to ask. Um, some of the other um, panelists, I, I, my my chat froze, so I, I don't see any questions. Maureen, can you maybe see if are there any questions from the audience? I don't see any, no. Okay, um, let's see. So we have about maybe five more minutes. Um, are there any other like uh, final suggestions, you know, advice that you have for our UCLA students that will be going abroad? You know, how did you decide on Ireland? Were, you, were there any other countries that you were thinking about? Did you consult um, with your political science advisor before going? Maybe if you can kind of uh, cover some of those topics and uh, maybe we can start with Catherine. Yeah, I would say the biggest advice I have is just really think about what your priorities are with going abroad. Is it traveling every weekend? Because something that I didn't think about, but I really lucked out with, with Dublin is the airport is amazing and you can fly super cheap on Ryanair pretty much to every major European city. And I also had Fridays off and then halfway through the semester, we also had Mondays off. So I had four day weekends, <laughs> which was amazing. And so wow. if that's your priority, then, then find a city that you can travel easily, that there's a great airport, super accessible. Um, but if you're more focused on, you know, staying in that one city the whole semester, then that's obviously not gonna be as big of a concern. Um, can I just jump on after Yes, that? go ahead, Alexis. Okay, great. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree. I think Dublin is an amazing hub for traveling. Um, that's part of the reason why I was interested in it as well. I was also considering Mali, um, or excuse me, Ghana, which is a totally different option. Um, I was looking at both, but Ghana was the one that was offered through UCLA, I believe, and it just, that would have been fun too, but there's no travel, so it's totally different. But I'm seeing a question that popped up in the chat about studying abroad versus um, internship. Can I respond to that? Yes, go ahead, please. Okay, great. So, I think that they're both amazing options and it really depends on what you're looking for. If you need internships for your resume, go with that. But keep in mind that even when you're studying abroad, there are opportunities to volunteer. There are opportunities to intern. You don't have to do an internship through the program in order to get those experiences. And I think that when you're taking a heavier course load, you really benefit academically and intellectually um, one of my favorite things about being abroad as a political science student um, who has an international focus was really getting that international perspective. Um, I mean, when you're in America, you get a very American perspective. We tend to be very American centric and it's different when you are in a different country. They, they have a more global perspective. And frankly, I loved it so much that I'm trying to go abroad for my master's next year um, because I need that international perspective with what I wanna get into. Wow, very nice. Thank you, Alexis. Um, let's see, uh, Maureen or Alex, do you see anything else on the chat? Uh, like I said, my panel is frozen. Um, or either Alexis or Katie, do you see anything else? Any other questions? Um, well, I'm, there's just that. I can touch on, I guess, why I chose to, to go the internship route, which mm -hmm. for me, um, which Alexis said, you know, if you need the internship experience, then it's a great opportunity to get both. I really felt like I got the best of every world possible study abroad because I got the classes, I got the internship credit, and I was able to travel on weekends. And the only thing that I missed out on was that connection with like local students. But I like I wrote my law school uh, applica application essay on my internship abroad. I it's been on my resume. Every employer is always super interested in talking about it because it's unique to, it's just a very unique experience that they don't see very often. So I will say that like, it's been awesome to be able to talk about that. Wow, very nice. If it, obtaining a visa is delayed, I, I'm not sure. Yeah, very nice, very nice. 
Um, I do want to add that uh, many years ago, way back in the 90s, I was a UCLA student and I majored in political science. I was international, uh, what is it, international relations um, concentration, and I was able to do um, basically three study abroad programs in Italy. Um, I spent over a year there and I've been working with this office for 25 years. And this, yeah, definitely studying abroad is the best thing. Uh, that you can do as a college student. So definitely take advantage. Um, again, reach out to any of us if you have any questions, concerns, my contact information is on the website. And then the last thing is um, Maureen or Alex, um, any final words or are there any other um, questions or chats on the yeah, screen? There's one question about um, is obtaining a visa delayed due to COVID? I'm not sure about visas, but specifically for passport applications and renewals, they're taking about four and a half to five months. So definitely apply for a passport if you haven't already. Um, that's what we know as of right now. Yes, and then just to quickly add, um, sometimes um, the visas are also delayed because of the consulates being um, shut down or minimal staff. So again, you know, as long as you're on top of things, you apply early to everything, um, you know, in theory, <laughs> there shouldn't be too much of a challenge. But yeah, definitely, that's a good question. Let's see, um, it's 4.32. So any final questions, concerns, anything else? Um, do the students apply have any other questions? Good, good. So I think we're good. So again, I really want to thank Alexis and Katie. Really appreciate it. You know, um, you know, we have people like you to help us recruit students for political science. And um, yeah, so that's good. Um, again, well, thanks again um, for attending this webinar. And I think we're going to stop recording. Um, actually, yes.